Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Dear me, it had to happen at one point, I guess. So, uh, we've done a bit of work on this engine. Uh, for those who have noticed, the inlets come off. Uh, yeah, I, uh, in downloading the, the files, uh, and I really need to change the way I do this, I hit the wrong button, the delete button. So, there I was thinking it was downloading, I went off to do a few other things, came back and I'm like, why is it finished already? It shouldn't have happened. Why are no files left? Anyway, so what have we missed? Um, as I said, we're taking the inlet off. So ooh, we've got it down here. We've taken, uh, so on this one, we've managed to get the, the fuel rail and the injectors off as well. Uh, so they've come up quite easily uh, compared to the other one. Uh, maybe I just wasn't trying hard enough for the other one, but um, we'll see how we go. Still gotta take the other one off actually. So the fuel rails over there and the injectors, we'll go over and take those apart a little bit more. What I'll do, we're going to take the, the rest of this apart. Um, I did explain that the, you know, near number four, this stud here is the, the one that is the worst for getting corrosion. Um, these other, some of these others do as well, but this one's probably the worst one. I was quite lucky with this engine. This one's come apart quite well. Uh, the first edition engine I bought, the one that's in bits at the moment, that one, I really struggled with getting that off so the steel stud corroded nicely in here and um, it wouldn't come out but this one this one's obviously this is the mini this is the engine from the mini and it wasn't too bad obviously a bit bit dirty but there you go it's an engine I guess so the next thing that does corrode quite badly is are these studs here uh, so we we'll want to take those off we'll take the um, the boost valve off Uh, we'll take that off there, we'll take this part, uh, obviously these things, you know, a lot of these things can go away and get cleaned up at some point. Uh, I have actually got a set that are clean so, and been painted. Uh, the question is, do we just clean these and leave them at that, or, I don't know, we'll see what we do with this set. Uh, in fact, actually, thinking about this, this may, I may never use this again. We'll, we'll see. I've got an idea. Let's see if it comes off, but we'll talk about that later. Right, so we're going to take this apart. Uh, we'll take the fuel rail apart. The other thing that I did want to cover off uh, today is we did take off we did take off the uh, dampener as well. We had a look at the, the oil pump in here. Uh, and what I did is I realized that when we discussed this last time, uh, I explained something a little bit wrong. So. I'm going to bring the camera around, pop this off again, have a look, and I'll explain what I mean. But We'll try and investigate a little bit where that came from, but I think a lot of the oil has come from this seal here. Uh, so you can see definite um, traces of oil dripping down from here. Uh, and so I imagine over time it's come down here and it's collected here. Now, possibly with the spinning of everything, it's possibly um, made oil come up around here. Um, and there's certainly quite a lot down here. Uh, this sump gasket was replaced maybe a couple of years ago, but you know, it's possibly been leaking for a while and obviously never got around there and then there to clean it. But having a look inside, it's definitely a bit dirty in here. And we can see here that this rail has broken here. Just this, there's a little bit missing there. It's not massively bad. Um, we can see here the discoloration that this engine hasn't really hasn't been serviced often enough I think is the, the point here which is on me right so you have to excuse the fact this is filthy but what I explained and what I've got completely wrong uh, I did ask a question about what this valve was for because it seemed weird to me because I was thinking the pickup was here oil pump down here and then out through to the filter but it's, I'm around the wrong way completely around the wrong way. this is the pickup from the sump here down low so as pressure builds up oil pressure oil gets pumped through here out in here into there and what happens is this valve is a pressure relief valve obviously if this pressure builds up so much that there's just too much pressure coming in here this will pop and it'll stop oil coming through and it'll stop pumping oil as much oil through so now good we understand that which is good. Uh, we'll take this apart as well at some point and have a look at that and see how clean that is inside, whether it's something we need to do. Um, and obviously the rest of this will come apart as well. But for now, 
we're going to pop that back on just for now. Right, so we just realised this is what I've got oil in it, so we've got to empty that out. Uh, we want to take apart the fuel rail and the uh, inlet manifold properly. Right, so as we can see, definitely a bit dirty. They worked, uh, the engine, well, I'm assuming they still work, but certainly a bit of crap in there. The two, I'm assuming there's just two outlets there. They seem to be okay, but I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, but we'll see what we do with these because they will not be going back into this engine. Uh, that's for sure. So, but I figured, I was finding out how much it cost to, to test them and clean them, but it's going to depend on, you know, if someone really wants them or you know, I don't know how many people want injectors, especially uh, the standard jet injectors that come with these cars. I think most people are looking for bigger. like it when things ping across the room. Hang on a sec, I can see where that is. Now while it's quite a nice sunny day, it's quite windy outside so we have to excuse all the noises. So I'm keeping all my injector parts and fuel rail parts in the bag so we know where they are. So let me see if you can see. I'm just, this, these metal clips, they just slide off one side but they're held they're held either side, so I'm just popping one out far enough. Just popping one out, see if you can see that. Try and hold that back and then try and pop the other one and push it away. Here we go, that one didn't ping so far. Uh, and then these injectors should just, he says. Should just pull out. Bit of, bit of extra fuel floating around there. Be interesting to see what. There's a bit of interesting green corrosion, which is usually what you associate with brass or copper. Copper mainly, should I say? Interesting. And only down. No, no little bits down here as well so there we go so that's interesting is that a copper pipe someone please tell me you can see a little bit colorish color of the original pipe in there very interesting right let's get the other one out and then we've got the fuel pressure Right, one more. Come on. Right. Little, little bits of crap in there for sure. Some little bits of crap, so never good. Now certainly won't help your injectors. Um, so I guess that'll be the challenge, like I said, is deciding what to do with these because um, I probably will not use them uh, so the question is do I keep them I've got another set over there obviously uh, but I'll find out how much it costs to clean them up and uh, test them if it's not too exorbitant um, we might do that it's three and a half bar pressure it runs to so we'll need to clean that up for a bit of corrosion let's why not let's pull it apart eh You'll want to see what's inside. Of course, if it wants to come out, that is. Here we go. Got underneath it. So I've managed to just lift it up from the side here enough to get the screwdriver in the slot. There we go. Right, a couple of O-rings in there. See a little spring and a ball bearing in there. Uh, 
Uh, so I'm picking as well that if you're replacing this sort of stuff, you want to make sure that these the O-rings that you use are okay in fuel. So this is actually this is a good question, and I don't know if anyone's out there's involved. One of the things I'm keen to look at is E85 conversions. Oh, I see. So fuel. No, let's have a look. <laughs> see what we can see. Fuel's coming in this pipe here, which is in the center there, right? And then obviously that's sealed up, and then you've got this outside, which goes the hole goes out to the fuel rail. So the fuel's going to come in <laughs> through this filtered top, which has got crap all over it. Um, goes through. Obviously, it's sealed off here from the rest of the chamber. Goes into here, and then there's a, there's a spring inside there. There was a spring inside there. Um, let's see if I can pop that off again. So you might be able to see, hopefully, there's a spring inside here and a ball bearing. Um, so as the pressure builds up at, at three and a half bar, that's going to open up and it's going to let fuel down through and out there's little holes down around here, which will squirt into here, into the fuel rail. Next thing we wanted to have a look at So we've got the sensor, we'll take that off. Using a T20 for this. Alright. It's a bit grubby, but it's all right. Right, next thing on this, we'll take off the booster. More of it tight. Yeah. As I may have mentioned before, but I can't remember if it was in there. Right, got those. Now, I think I may have mentioned this before, but it was possibly in the deleted, uh, deleted, deleted soft um, videos. This is a blow off valve. Obviously, back into the system. It goes back into the system. It's not open to air like you get on most tube turbochargers. So this drops. <laughs> out of the so pressurized air coming from the intercooler comes through here and then on back off the stuff this pops open and uh, it dumps it back into the intake intake before the supercharger now you can get uh, these uprated so uh, slightly tighter spring in here so that therefore it takes a lot more before this pops open so it just gives you a bit more boost for a bit longer um, so, I don't know any more of the technicalities outside of that, but uh, that's something you can do. Obviously, I think the guy that does it, you know, you, you send them yours, he'll send you another one, plus you give them some money. But um, obviously, they could do with a nice clean up that. But right, for now, we're going to find some, we're going to put that, and you already dropped the bolt in. We'll find somewhere to keep this. Maybe I've got another bag, have I? Right. Let's try and pop this off. Now, these are very good at corroding. Certainly the last one we pulled apart, uh, they were they were quite corroded, some of these. And it took a while to get them off. So, and that one there, I've just seen nice corrosion dust dropping up. So let's see what we get. Yeah, this is, this is no, it's not too bad. This one's moving. But okay, 
gasket. What have we done with the other gasket? Right, another horn off. Another one to possibly be cleaned. I'm very interested. The guy who, um, the last horn I've had done, when he um, media blasts, he's bl blasted these surfaces, which I'm not sure he should have done because it pits, pits it slightly. And I'm just be interested to see how well the seal, well, certainly this one seals when um, put it back together. Right, so here, as you can see, corrosion. Not so bad, not so bad. We're quite lucky that came out without getting stuck, but um, all good. But that's all opened up. That can be cleaned up. So this will be ported, this one. Uh, I'll probably just take it down to the guy who does that because I think he does chemical cleaning rather than media blasting um, which might be a little bit better on the surfaces I don't know we'll see okay that's that part apart now what was the next thing we were going to see um, right let's uh, get rid of the crap that's in here It's pretty dark. Right, while we're waiting for that oil to drain out, let's uh, get this piece off. Oh, just notice I'm trying to push up to right towards a nice stud of nut that could damage my fingers nicely. Is it right? Mm -hmm. Mm, lovely isn't it I think the interesting thing is you get any leakage to start with this all starts to the this starts to rust up a little bit and then it starts encroaching on the seal itself and um, you can start to see build up on the inside here and the outside so you've got a slight ring there of metal but you can different places where it's failed slightly but there so this yeah this is very 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 flat now this this o-ring very similar it's not as quite as bad as the one i've just replaced recently um but it's definitely gone and um we can see here where it's probably leaked down through this side here a little bit over here, but probably more so on this side. Right, we'll have to clean that one up. So clean up, just wire brush. Not a harsh wire brush to... Don't want to put lots of score marks in this, and it's just aluminium. Get rid of all the crap off there comes up quite nicely don't know what it'll be like we can do a little bit on the inside we'll probably get a bit of um, wet and dry sandpaper in there to clean that up but that's actually it's actually pretty, not too bad in there really considering the last one I did was that was really had lots of crunchy bits in there right probably need to pull that rubber thing out Nice and sticky. Yeah, look at that. You can see how the water's got on the other side of that seal. So that's definitely not been sealing properly anymore. Not completely. Lots of crap in here. Just builds up over time. This is where it looks like it's probably leaked the most, I think, on this side. So, for those who um, do their supercharger service and do swap their 
water pump out make sure you've pulled this off as well and make sure you swap this o-ring in the back so because the oil is practically drained we'll put some plug back in and then we'll try and squeeze some of that oil into the container I've got so this is the this is the oil seal I changed at one point oh that smells yummy doesn't look too bad but they're cheap so you know they're worth replacing right looking for other things to pull off we've got the other air sensor here uh, and this is the one that um, I noticed someone posted recently about breaking this pipe it becomes very brittle typically broken down this end here where it goes into the inlet pipe so um, I might see this bit should come off here, but I might need to undo that first, but it's in the way of that. Can I get to it? I don't want to force it. Right, we're going to get the Allen key for that. We'll take that off. I don't want to force it and break anything. Lovely. This is a three, three mil. Right, sorry if the angle's changed slightly. Um, battery ran flat. So what I was saying is, this is the three mil. So I'm going to undo this. We'll take the pipe off. We'll put the sensor with the others. Right. So this. Here we go. So this, as you can see, this sensor looks very similar. Similar. I'm not going to say it's the same to the other intake sensor on the inlet. Um, this one doesn't get so oily because and, and crap on it because that's obviously coming through the actual air intake, whereas the rest has gone through the supercharger. Um, but this is the pipe that breaks and it snaps usually, I think, when people are trying to pull it in and out of the TPE. Right, so I thought I'd double check. They are different, they look similar, but they're different part numbers. So I don't know if you can see there. So the one we just pulled off here, the inlet 1185 and then 0415 for that one. So part numbers, yes, one digit different, 0872, 648 and 679, sorry. So that's the BMW number on there. Right, now we've got that off. We should be able to, we should be able to loosen this screw here off. Not only that, we should better get to this one here. There we go, that wasn't tight, was it? So two bits here, there's the bracket. Not two. No, and that. Try and remember what that plastic bit holds. Uh, we can take that apart and get that cleaned up and painted. We're going back on. Get all those plates cleaned up and painted actually. I know they've still got a couple on the engine actually, so right, that one's off, a bit of corrosion. Still gonna decide whether I bother going to the alloy version of this when we do the engine up, maybe. But oop. Seals stuck on, nice. Thermostat. So one of the things I'm trying to work out exactly is what happens with the water flow in these engines, right? So water pump goes in here, right? Because it's sucking from the bottom of the radiator. So bottom radiator is where it's coolest. doesn't come from the top. So bottom of the radiator comes up in here, through the water pump, into here, through the engine, and then it heats up and goes out. Um, so it goes, you've got two outputs. This one here goes back round to the top of the radiator, and this one goes off to the heater matrix so hence the reason why your car is not necessarily warm you can't get heat in the car until the engine's warm enough right so this is where it's coming from now you've got other pipes that obviously go off to the cooler as well you've got another pipe that comes off the water pump uh, have I got a water pump handy yep here we go uh, so we've got water pump sitting there like that coming in from the radiator, that goes into there. You've got this pipe that's going off, and that's pumped 
or cool water but it's going to go down to your oil cooler and then what I need to understand is how the return stuff works because um, you obviously got this bit uh, and then you've got another bit that's coming back from the matrix and not 100% sure in the oil not quite sure how that bit works at the moment so anyway there you go right another sensor we'll clean that up but we'll go and stick it with the rest of it okay Right guys, so the only few things left to take off now, I've got the knock sensor, we've got this cover, it's probably got an o-ring which is, is wearing out, so if we're going to do it properly, we'll take this off as well. And that'll be it for today. In the next episode, what we'll do is we will look to start taking the top apart. So we'll take the rockers off, take the cam out, we'll take the sump off, uh, we might even get around, we might take the, the head off as well. We'll get the oil pump out, get all the chain out, um, and we'll start dismantling this so that we can take it off and um, take it to the engine guy and see what we're going to do about it. Um, I think, you know, there's not a huge need to do all the internals that I'm aware of, uh, but again, if anyone wants to tell me I'm wrong that I should do that, fine, let me know. Um, always interested to hear people's opinions. What I understand is the, obviously these internals are forged enough because this is forced induction so the internals would have been built to handle what this car can do obviously as well the internals on the base are pretty much the same as what's on the JCW at 210 so um, again well at least hang on I think that's true if I'm wrong someone let me know um, so a lot of people say you know up to with what the supercharger can push into this thing the internals are fine it's only when you turbocharge them you need to update them so we'll see what they're like so that's the first thing if they're no good they'll be to be, need to be replaced anyway um, and we'll consider that the um, if they're okay well you know again we'll see I don't I've mentioned I don't intend to turbocharge this we're just gonna supercharge it uh, will we change the supercharger on it uh, not straight away Maybe in future, maybe we decide that um, you know we want to really max it out. Uh, but at the moment, we're just going to see what we can get. And I want to sort of, what I want to do is mark the steps along the way. Uh, so when this goes back to obviously the car as it is, uh, I want to take that to a rolling road. And um, when it's on the rolling road, what I want to do is put a, another cam in it that I've got. See what that's like. Tune it up. Uh, and then we've got some benchmarks then this when that's done and when this engine's ready this will go in this will be the next step up uh, so the engine the car's got 380 injectors it's got a standard cam at the moment it's got a 17 percent pulley uh, what we'll do is we've got a newman 1.2 cam in here somewhere that we'll take down to wrong road and put that on it and see what we can tune out of that uh, then this one again the difference is we'll port the head on this we'll port the whole thing right through we'll have a look at what headers we put on it we might put a slightly um, bigger cam on it or uh, basically looking at something like the cat cam 469 um, and just see what we can get out of this and then you know the, the question will be and then come down to cost do we dyno the engine while it's out of the car or do we just go and put that in and, and dyno it but um, we've got options again it'll come down to how much money this is all going to cost so uh, yeah right that's it for now I'm just going to get uh, I'll, we'll go out um, while I take these off This is worth a quick look as we uh, empty the end of this video, but is that? Yeah, crap. Look at that. I imagine that obviously as you've got water pumping around, 
because this is a little inlet water eddies and lumps and crap just sort of build up because there's not a lot of pressure through here it's um it's like i guess in a river where you get little side bits that come out you get all the crap that sort of comes in and it'll just swirl around there and sit there and build up but i mean the seal's all right but uh definitely good to replace it see you again